An estimated 3.85 million South Africans suffer from diabetes, with many remaining undiagnosed. This is according to the MediClinic South Africa. Now research also shows that diabetes is the number one killer of women in South Africa and the second leading cause of death in men. Bahai Tsudumela and good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we recognize World Diabetes Day by taking a look at what diabetes is and what it's like to live with diabetes and highlight uh, diabetes awareness campaigns and events taking place uh, this month. Let me bring in to, to the conversation Siabonga Zuma, who's joining us via Zoom, is a diabetes advocate working with the Sweet Life Diabetes community. Now, Siabonga, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for asking. Thanks for, for, for coming in. Look, I want us to, you know, start the conversation by uh, understanding, you know, what your organization uh, is all about, Sweet Life Diabetes Community, and also the role that you play in diabetes awareness and advocacy. Okay, so my name is Yabo Mazuma, and uh, I am living with type 1 diabetes. I've been living with it for 15 years. I'm here represent which is an online community for people living with type with people living with diabetes as well, type one or type two. Um, as I'm wearing blue, the campaign that we are running is Wear Blue for Diabetes. Uh, Wear Blue for Diabetes uh, is a campaign that aims to raise awareness about uh, diabetes. Uh, we want the whole of South Africa to wear blue on the 14th of November, which is uh, World Diabetes Day. We also want them to know the five symptoms of uh, diabetes, which is uh, need needing to pee, thirst, hunger, weight loss, and exhaustion. So that's our goal, it's just to turn the whole of South Africa blue on World Diabetes Day. Mm. See, so, yeah, before we can uh, continue... Because we, we yeah. feel like there is little to know when... Yeah, you can continue. Yeah, because we feel like there's little to no awareness when it comes to diabetes. As much as we as diabetes advocates are speaking about it, we don't feel like there's that much attention to, to, towards it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want us uh, to take a quick pa package, uh, see, uh, you know, just to look at uh, what diabetes is and also some of the common symptoms that we can find for people who are living with diabetes. Let's take a look at this package. What is diabetes? Diabetes is one of the biggest epidemics that we have uh, currently, especially type 2. So diabetes is a condition that comes about when your body is not able to handle sugar. Okay. So in other words, we eat uh, sugar, we eat sweets, we eat chocolates, or we eat a meal, and you're either because you have no insulin or you have insulin but the insulin can't function properly, your sugar levels then go up. And once it reaches a critical level, which are uh, um, seven on the fasting blood sugar, you are then classified as having diabetes. Remember there are a few types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is when there's, you don't have any insulin at all. Type 2 is when you do have insulin, but your insulin doesn't work as it should. And then you also can have a third type called uh, gestational diabetes or diabetes that may happen during pregnancy. But the most common, 90 to 95% of cases of diabetes are type 2 diabetes. Shabonga, um, I mean, the good doctor there is explaining to us about, uh, you know, the types of diabetes. There maybe, I mean, earlier on you did mention that you are living with type 1 diabetes. Maybe can you tell us a bit more about that? Because, you know, as uh, we know that there are different forms, you know, gestational, we've got ladder, we've got moldy, uh, neonatal diabetes, quite a variety of them. But just tell us a bit more about uh, you know how you've been living with type 1 diabetes and also your general um, you, you know when you were diagnosed how did you feel okay so I was first introduced to type 1 diabetes through my older sister she was diagnosed in 2007 a few months down the line in 2008 I was also diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes at first, it was easy to, 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 to live with it because as a kid, I was 12 years old when I was diagnosed. It's easy to follow strict rules at that age because your parents will set a rule and you will follow that rule. 
But as I got older and went into high school, I fell into peer pressure. Uh, that's when I started to uh, forget that I'm living with, the, with, the, uh, with diabetes. And also another important factor to mention is that my doctor told me that in 2011, he told, she told me that if I don't live a healthy life, I won't reach the age of 21, one either alive or with functioning kidneys. So in a way, that messed me up mentally and made me want to uh, do things that I shouldn't be doing. So I started uh, smoking weed, going partying, which is now a double life. I even kept my diabetes a secret from my friends because of the diabetes stigma. Uh, one may ask, what's the diabetes stigma? So the diabetes stigma is people asking you, uh, uh, did you eat too much sugar? Uh, I thought diabetes was for the elderly and I was young. So I felt ashamed to be living with diabetes. So I kept it a secret. So yeah, that, that, that was my journey up until 2020 when I decided to finally come out that I'm living with diabetes. Uh, I started writing poetry, uh, when I wrote poetry, my son was born. And when my son was born, uh, my perspective in life changed in general. And now I realize that I wasn't just living for myself, but I was also living for my son now. So, yeah, I am a poet, a diabetes advocate, and I'm, I'm proud to be wearing blue. Well, see, I want us to park it there. Uh, now that we understand what type 1 diabetes is, I want us to take a quick look at what type 2 diabetes is uh, in this next insert that we've uh, compiled for you. Type 2 diabetes is the most common type of diabetes, and this is a lifestyle disease. And the context of type 2 diabetes is in someone who has a family history. So somewhere down the line, someone in the family has diabetes, they are overweight, and they don't exercise. So that's probably half of South Africa already. And if you look at diabetes in South Africa, it's the second biggest cause of death already. So anybody who doesn't sit, on, uh, at the, sits in the office on a chair all day, is overweight, doesn't go to gym, and as someone in their family who has diabetes, they are automatically at much higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So it's not the sugar, sugar does not cause diabetes, but it leads to us being overweight, especially abdominal obesity, which then puts you at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Let us take a quick head break. When we come back, we continue our conversation with Sia Bonga. Do stay with us. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto today. Before the ad break, uh, we got to understand what exactly diabetes is and how it uh, you know, presents itself in the body. Now we get a better understanding of living with diabetes and how best to manage it. Uh, still joining us via Zoom is a diabetes advocate working with Sweet Life Diabetes Community, Siabonga Zuma. He also lives with type 1 diabetes. See, yeah, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, having type 1 diabetes, I want you to tell us more about the challenges that you faced and how, you know, it has impacted on your lifestyle. Uh, earlier on, I picked up, you know, saying that, look, I needed to just shift a few things. Uh, also, my diet needs to change. How do you manage that? Because, you know, once a dietitian puts a menu that you're supposed to follow, you know, given the economic challenges that we are facing as a country, somewhere, somehow, it must impede in your pocket. It does, it does. I'll just make an example. There's, there's something called the blue, the blue Balloon Challenge on, on social media. It's whereby you have to post a video playing with a bouncing a blue balloon up in the air. That represents how it is living with type 1 diabetes or diabetes in general. Diabetes is not a, a disease where you can just take medication and then it will pause for those few hours. Even after taking your insulin, I'm insulin dependent as a type 1. Even after taking your insulin, you still have to manage what you eat. You have to manage your, your stress levels, uh, so on and so on. So when it comes to uh, a diet, like you had mentioned, um, I'm, I'm still trying to find my feet as someone who lived with, uh, with diabetes for, kept it a secret for so long. Uh, but I've tried uh, having a diet. Uh, problem is the economy is not on our side at the moment. But uh, they always say we shouldn't use uh, the economy as an excuse. 
in fact, we, you, a diet, you can always eat anything that everyone is eating, but you have to choose what to eat and not to eat. Because an excuse that I used to have is that I can join a diet because my whole family will have to be on diet, which is impossible. So you should eat smaller portions when you are, when you are living with diabetes. We are approaching the festive season now. Food can be overwhelming. There will be cake all over. If you feeling if you feel like having cake, you should be aware that uh, you should be self aware that at the moment I'm feeling like this. Do can I afford to eat a piece of cake? If not, don't eat it. But if you can have a small portion, you having a three you, you are invited at a wedding or something. Mm. There are three course meals. Having that three course meal, you don't have to have uh, three full plates. You can just have small portions uh, depending on how your sugar levels are. So yes, that's how it is. Also, when it comes to exercising, it's important to keep active. You may not afford to go to gym, but you can take a five minute, 10 minute walk around your neighborhood because uh, as they mentioned, uh, type two diabetes, to prevent uh, being diagnosed with it, you have to keep active especially if there's a family member who has diabetes. Yeah. Mm. On that note, I want us to, to, yeah. On that note, I want us to just to take a quick look at the signs and symptoms of uh, diabetes for our viewers out there so that they can be able to understand, uh, you know, uh, what diabetes is all about. Let's take a look. So when we talk about the signs and symptoms of diabetes, bearing in mind that early on in the disease, there may not be any symptoms. So patients, that's why patients need to know the risk. Am I at risk of diabetes? So if I have a family member who is diabetic and I'm overweight and I don't move, don't go to gym, I'm at risk. Therefore have your sugar checked. A lot of the time, um, I mean if you look at the data in South Africa, probably about 50% of patients who are diabetic don't even know they're diabetic because they don't have symptoms. This, by the time you get symptoms, you've probably had diabetes for about seven years. And we talk about, well I talk about the five T's, tired, Toilet, terrible, thin, thirsty. So you feel just exhausted. You go from being okay to terribly fatigued. You start losing weight. You urinate excessively. Um, and you feel just out of sorts. And you have an excessive thirst and hunger. You can literally drink a two liter cold drink or water and it just goes straight out. So that rapid loss of fluids is very important. So we don't focus that much on symptoms. By the time you have symptoms, you've had it for a long time. Screening is important. So if you think you may be at risk of diabetes, just have a simple finger prick test and we can measure your sugar levels. Shabonga, I mean, with that knowledge on signs and symptoms, please uh, will you elaborate on the Sweet Life Diabetes Communities Know the Five campaign that uh, is running and that speaks about the five key signs and symptoms. Yes, so uh, as I've mentioned, the five uh, key symptoms in order it's needing to pee that's when you just uh in an hour maybe you go three times to the loo uh it's also thirst you are always thirsty uh even after having a huge glass of water you you get hungry that's usually happens when your sugar is low it's weight loss and it's also exhaustion so you may not experience all these symptoms you may experience two or three of them. That doesn't mean that you should uh, ignore that. You should go to the doctor and get screened and just to be sure if you are living with diabetes or not. Because as the doctor has mentioned, there are people who are living with pre-diabetes but don't know that they are living with pre-diabetes. Uh, uh, this morning I read a study that said 3.2 million people could be living with pre-diabetes and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to be aware of, even if there is one symptom, not, it doesn't have to be three or four, or even if there is one, uh, just go to the doctor and get screened and yeah, just for your peace of mind. Mm. So yeah, just a quick, so, yeah. just, just a quick one because we're running out of time. Um, where can people find you? Uh, on social media. Yeah. Uh, on social media, on Facebook, I'm Siabonga Gwanele Zuma. On Instagram, I'm underscore siabonga underscore zuma. 
And on, on X, I'm underscore SK underscore Zuma. So those are my social media platforms. Sia, thanks very much uh, for taking the time and sharing your story with us. Much appreciated. Thank you for having me. I mean, uh, staggering numbers indeed. I know that uh, close to 537 million uh, adults across the world um, have diabetes, according to the stats that's been released by the Health and Essentials there. And, uh, you know, very, very staggering numbers. Uh, experts are predicting that uh, this number might rise to 643 million by 2030 and 783 million by 2045 clearly shows that uh, you know people need to take care of themselves and, and also they need to go and check up get checked up uh, so that they can be able to understand if they have diabetes or not siabonga thanks very much for taking the time that siabonga zuma uh, unpacking all things uh, diabetes there let's take a quick head break we're coming back after this Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwani. We are almost at the end of the show and uh, continuing with the conversation on diabetes. Now joining us in studio is Manda Sibeko, the chairperson of the Manda Way to Campaign. He joins us to speak more on the awareness, uh, you know, around chronic illnesses, including diabetes. Uh, Mr. Sibeko, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us uh, this evening. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I want us to start the conversation by yes. uh, looking at the support group itself. Uh, yeah. Maybe exactly mm. what is it that you do as Mandawe to maybe uh, just to give us a breakdown of okay. the work that you do. Okay. All right. E Mandawe was started this year around May, where I was diagnosed with um, diabetic and then I was hospitalized for two weeks. Then at the church, I eight ten, Zagami, and then eleven, turn of the organization because I saw a gap. Mrs. Pegel, who would take it, and I could have been to better pity, but Abanawa cool is better until again because Sola Abantu, number of five to seven years at the pity, but still coming on as Pegel with the same problem until again. So being the building baboons, I would take why you so laugh it again until again. I told you to know the full tea in a one. So I found why at the fourth of the one. On to find out medication about charging and get a proper because remember what you said about medication uh before that medication mm. but it's a particular it's more like it's where i'm on yeah when they feel it's a two i met for me they push what they do before they put up before, before yeah you're yeah. told again but for 30 minutes can you get we can take a meal then the rest will follow after 30 minutes again and told again then that poke is all humble at the end of this was an insulin yes lab i mean yeah yeah and so again so now in the game bonita is you might have way to chronic support group or what you think any imperative are cool so if you say about uba lulega go medication number one and so again and then abantu baba by default because of a food that they're eating because who's about to pay? Because we're going to go to the global one. Yeah, just general food. Yeah. Typical example. I can buy. You can buy. You can buy KFC. I'm not allowed to go to KFC. If you go to KFC, me and you say it's cool. You understand? What things you want to eat? Let me know. So, but the one to one, no matter what you say, you're a thief. You understand? So, you're going to allow working things and get cool. I wanted to talk about, um, you know how you've been living with uh, diabetes. Mm, diabetes. Uh, you yeah. know, how has the uh, whole journey been like uh, mm. since you you were diagnosed? Yeah, since I was diagnosed. Yeah, I'm going to two hours and nine because we're coming through the field that we're going to be seeing again. But now, we have the lemon and the kai and the karakona. We have the support group here, Mr. Engineer. What guys? So we're going to move to now. We're going to again. We're going to stop. We're going to medication. We're going to again. And then my friends want. They so 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 you you mean it it started from inside yes, from the home. so um, i mean how do you then provide support as an organization for people that are living with diabetes okay. you know uh, what are some of the challenges and what do you think 
uh, government should do in order to make sure that they fight uh, the scourge? One, the government is not going to be able to do it. Because remember what my sister South Africa is mm-hmm. saying, and it's unemployment. So now, if you take a chronic, you can't take a chronic, you can't take a chronic, you can't take a chronic. So, you can't take a chronic, and so like, you can't take a maintain. That is why I want to take a chronic, but we respect it. And so like, because you can't take a chronic, the type of food, like it's part, you got. Yeah. And as course allowed to see Scott go down to it because too much I'm a fool to any until again. But my see Momanga Bas of Vumel, you end up so things over into zero. Yeah, because I see um, you know, dietitians normally how they put mm. the type of meals that you guys have to eat. Obviously it, it's going to impact on your pocket as an individual. Yes. And yeah. If you're not working, then uh, somewhere, somehow, you will default. Yes. So, as Tina, as a matter of way, it's a matter of what is Tina. So, this is the Umpara, it's a cool gas. For the most part, I want to have a diabetic. Because now, if a school is not a school, a school is not a school, it's not a school, nutrition is not a school. It's not a school, it's not a school, it's not a school, it's not a school, it's not a school. And so again, yet Baka Uza Urong is going. And so again, because about Vilanga Bala, we need Tina Snabuban. So Tina is a matter with chronic, see ya beyond, see ya even as a Kai, La Akon, Mutuan, and so like, see Peruto Kilana, who've never found Uru, and so again, some niggers will come to a bit right at. Yes. This is lastly before I let you go. I mean, you have an awareness uh, event on the 28th uh, that you're hosting later this month that yeah. focuses on diabetes. Maybe tell us more about it and also for people that want to be involved in your event, what is it that they can do and where do they find you? Okay. Yeah, on the 28th of November, it's like November is a diabetic month. Yeah. You can tell like a number. So now on, on our site, as month we're going to separate it, on the 28th of November, it's got a hall. It's a program that's nine up until three o'clock on Tambam. And so again, I want to bang us to like a cool. I can give my number, my email address. I want to like a cool. My number is 069 199 7740. I repeat 069 199 My email address is very simple. It's mild away to CSG at gmail.com. Mind the weight is chronic support group, but now we're going to use CSG at gmail.com. So you, you just, I mean, you said your event will focus on what? I just want to understand. We're going to, going to focus on diabetic number one. Yeah. And so again, one, it's going to go to a Labo bang agabi diabetic, but pay with lifestyle labo pila ya kuti imega njani njani. So again, na labo bang diabetic, kuti baya kuti inzibabu yele epegel for diabetic aki na chula again. And then number two, inte balo ya kuhul, kuti zazu kuti uruban. Yangu chula again, unga kaza bang ganda kuhul kuti una funu upuza ina funu kaza ina chula again. Impilo eya kwa kwa. And I was looking for this month, for this event, it healthy living, your ticket to a brighter future. That's what I was looking for this coming. Event. I hope uh, you know um, you guys uh, have a wonderful event that people get to understand mm. the message that you will be giving. Uh, unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but much appreciated for coming. I hope to have you soon on the show. Much appreciated. That was uh, Manda Sibeko, the chairperson of the Manda Way to Chronic Support Group, telling us more about the work that they do and the event that they will be hosting later this month. Uh, thank you to my earlier guest, diabetes advocate Sebonga Zuma, for coming through and sharing more on living with diabetes. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us the number 081-531-8857. For myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobola is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.